Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the session of, of this beautiful Monday um, to help foreigners and who land in, in Barcelona to, to avoid some headaches and to understand how the, how the paperwork works, what you have to do, when you have to do it, um, and uh, who can help you who can help you in this process from the public administration side and, and from the private side. My name is Raisa Venermo. I'm one of the partners at Ava Landing, and my title there is, um, is Landing Strategist. So what, uh, what does that mean? It, it means exactly what it sounds like. So what, what we do for, for, for business, for our foreign clientele, is that we um, uh, understand what the needs are of a foreign company or investor or a talent or professional or anybody wanting to or having chosen Barcelona as their destination. And then um, depending on the particular needs of, 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 of people such just like yourselves, we find among our lawyers and economists and accountants and, and different specialists, the, the, the dream team to, to help you. Um, the objective of this session is not to train you how to do these this, this different paperwork in detail, but to give you a general idea of, so that you don't miss anything important. And that the two or three things that everybody who comes to Barcelona needs to do, uh, you, you have a good idea of, of what it means and, and, and where to go. Uh, and then to give you some tips, general tips and, and uh, uh, information of where you can find more, uh, more information. Um, the reason why we cannot just dump you all the information is that all of you who, who are present uh, listening to us um, uh, have different needs and different backgrounds because it's not the, the formalities that you have to go through uh, if you come from the European Union or from, from UK in this case. Or, or in, in third parties, they are, they are not the same. Also, um, the, the things that you have to do are different if you come to study, if you come to work, if you come to work, if you work um, as, a, as an entrepreneur or for, for, for some other company. And depending on your position, if you work for some other company, it's different, the, the process is different if you're a highly qualified employee than if you, if you if you are not, if you are university degrees, certain salary, uh, working in a, in a technical sector. And then obviously we all have got our personal necessities. We may have family, dogs, pets, we may have a car that we want to bring along. Uh, so so um, the, the playing field or the, or the uh, playground is, is quite big. Um, I'm originally from Finland and I came to Barcelona 20 years ago and since 15 years ago um, I've been assisting foreigners in, in Barcelona and when I started 15 years ago um, everything was manual and I still remember waking up at four o'clock in the morning uh, queuing to different public uh, administration so that was many 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 things have been changed in 15 years. And I know that in 15 years, the one who is giving this particular speech uh, will, will only explain how to get the digital certificate and, and or, or to, 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 to get it done or everything online. But right now we are in, in the situation where there are still something, some uh, uh, formalities that you have to do in person, queuing. Uh, mostly by applying uh, or, or, or to uh, asking uh, for a, a, an appointment. You can do some of, the, some of the formalities by telephone, by post, authorizing a third party to do it on your behalf in any of these ways. And ever more with the digital certificate. We have started and um, the first recommendation is get you a digital certificate, even if, uh, if you wouldn't need it today, because tomorrow you will need it. The administration is, is digitalizing in the speed of light. 
um, it's not very easy because as you may know, um, Spain uh, is organized in four different levels of, of authorities. We have uh, the Spanish state that takes care of, for example, the, the, the work and residency permits, a part of them. Then we have the autonomous communities who have uh, certain powers um, for to organize organize formalities within the autonomous community. Then we have um, the provincial level, and finally the municipal level. So um, it will take still um, uh, some weeks, months, or, or, or a few years before we have one and only digital portal where you, where you can access to all these authorities. But we are getting there. And in the meanwhile, we'll, we, we have numerous different ways to to work uh, our way through the through the system so that we can uh, take advantage of what we really came here for, which is to to enjoy the magnificent magnificent quality of life and the opportunities and the security of, of, of this wonderful city. Uh, the exact things or the, the particular things that we will do um, we will do discuss today um, because either they are interesting or we think that that you might you might be interested in these things if you have some others that uh, you would like to to mention at the end um, we will leave time for for questions um, and to answer uh, to your different questions if if you want to know something about something that we haven't mentioned or have questions of something that we do discuss today um the first thing that we will go through is the famous or famous NIE number and specifically what it is and what is not because there's sometimes this eternal confusion between the NIA number and the residency permit which is not the same but Loras will tell you all about that in a in a, in a second then um as, uh, and this is this is everybody needs it so that's something that we will we will explain now also very important is to register at the city hall um, we'll, we'll let you know how to do that and, and why you should be doing it, why it's important for you. Then um, uh, a short mention about vehicles and uh, driving licenses and public transport, uh, which is fantastic in Barcelona. Um, interesting thing that uh, uh, the system also has embedded also for us as foreigners are the services and support for monoparental families or, or large families. Social security, if you get sick, you need to know what to do and how to get into the system. The digital certificate I already mentioned, uh, library cards, bets and bicing, um, bicing the, the, the bicycle services. Um, so let's, let's go back um, and, and start from the, from the moment when you arrive. If you are a European Union citizen, you are mostly welcome and the thing is fairly easy for you because there are no, no borders. Uh, the only thing that you have to do is to register yourselves um, uh, that we will, we will see in a while. Now, regarding the, the UK citizens, if there is somebody from UK listening and you have not yet uh, converted your existing residency into the British special regime, or if you are still a UK citizen coming from outside of Spain and planning to come to live to Barcelona, uh, you should act now because you have still two months and 11 days to do it until the end of the year. Um, and then if you are from non-European countries, um, and you want to spend here for more than the three months within a period of six months that the tourist residency uh, allows you to do, then uh, you have to apply for the residency or work permit. So that's kind of basic introduction. Um, I uh, wanted to present to you uh, Lourdes Santistevan, who is not only a great lawyer and, and uh, my partner, but also the CEO of our firm. So she will have uh, something to say about about this, these things. Yeah, thank you very much for the introduction, Raisa. It's a pleasure to be here. And um, 
as Raisa was mentioning, we are going to go over several administrative questions that we think you need to know if you are interested in, in coming to, to Barcelona. And let's see if we are able to do it in a practical way, okay, because some of them are a bit uh, not difficult to explain, but uh, I understand that if, if I were you and I start receiving information about several, several things, it could be, it gets sounds a bit complicated, but it isn't in fact. So my first duty is to inform you about the NIE number, okay, which uh, as Raisa was mentioning is, is um, there is important, it is important to distinguish what is it, okay. It, uh, it is very, this is basically an identification code for a foreigner, okay, it's like your ID card or your ID identification while you, when you need um, to do something in Spain, even to come in to live or just investing or incorporating a business or different issues. But it's, it's the number that will identify you before the authorities, okay? Does it mean that then when you get an ear, uh, you get automatically a right to live and work in Spain? No, okay? There is a, like a classification between an, an NIE, which is only for economical purposes, Okay, and the NIE you get when you get or you apply for a residency and a work permit. Uh, in case you initially applied only for economical purposes, I'll, I'll explain to you what is that. Okay, uh, and then you after get a permanent um, residency in Spain, the number does not change. That's the first good news. Okay, I, I don't have to care about it. Is it going to change? Is it the same number? No. Okay, when I was saying economical purposes is that, for example, uh, if you're planning to invest in Spain and uh, in Barcelona, you're planning to, to buy a beautiful apartment, um, you will need an IE also, an IE number, okay, which will be the identification code for you, but it, it's only for that purposes. It, it's just an example of what economical purposes means, okay. How do you get the number? Uh, there are basically two ways. You can do it personally, I'll, I'll let you know where, okay, or uh, by representation, by representative, uh, through a power of attorney, okay, um, that you have to sign before an official authority and someone representing you can get the near number for you, okay. We do it many, many times for our clients as part of our services, for example. And where do you, where can you apply for this, this near number? Uh, there are two main places, okay? The consulate or the embassy at your place of residency or nationality, or in Spain, when, while you're in Spain at the police stations in Spain, okay? So basically two places. So before you come to, to the country at the Spanish and consulate embassy, okay? You have to get an appointment. They will inform you of which document you will have to, to bring to the appointment and you can get a near number there or once you are in Spain, in one of the policy stations. Um, if you are in Spain and you want to apply for the NIA number because you didn't have it and you, you need it for the first time, because you recently arrived to the country and someone has asked you for this number, okay? You, the the more, most important thing you, you need to know is that uh, nowadays uh, you have to apply for an appointment, okay? Maybe some if some of you have already tried to get an ear, uh, you would know about the system, but it's important that uh, to know that you cannot go directly to the police station as for any, and you have to, to get an appointment first. There is a distinguish, uh, this, uh, distinction between uh, European uh, nationals, okay, and non-European nationals. Just remember that I am talking uh, about the NIAN, general NIAN number, that you may need for uh, economical purposes, but you still have not decided to come to live to, to Barcelona, okay? Um, as steps, uh, once you have applied for this, for this appointment, uh, you will be required to bring, a, a, to fill in a form, okay? Uh, you will be required to pay for a fee, um, a fee for, to the administration. Uh, then you go the day of the appointment, you bring all your, your, your documents, this tax, this form, your passport, and um, in one day or even less, okay, sometimes in the same day, you can get your, your paper for you, okay? Um, 
so just to avoid confusion, because I, I know it's it's uh, it, it may not sound very very clear, okay, Daniela, but I was talking about this uh, initial document, initial certificate, initial identification code that you may need required, okay, when you plan to do uh, some activity here, but. Uh, in case that your intention is from the very beginning, coming to live to, to Barcelona, coming to live and work here, then you have to be informed about uh, there are several types of permits you can apply for, okay? Several, I mean, depending on your personal situation and depending on your intentions. If you are from the European community, the European countries, uh, then it's, it's quite easy. You have to apply for like a certificate as a citizen of the European country. Okay, uh, again, always this, the procedure is very similar. You have to get an appointment first. Um, you have to collect some documents, go to the appointment and you get this certificate. And this certificate will give you your near number at the same time. Okay, it's like the same procedure. If you are, um, from from abroad, um, from a, a European country, then you have to think of uh, different possibilities depending on your plans. Let me just introduce you to some of them, uh, although there are several and each of them has its own requirements. Okay, so I, I'm not trying to give you information, a little information about all of them because it's just just impossible and we, we should know more about your, your situation. But just for example, there is the possibility to access to a non-lucrative visa, okay, which allows you to live but not to work in Spain. And you should demonstrate basically that you have your own funds to cover for your own expenses while you are in Spain during the validity of the permit. There are permits for safe employment, uh, safe employ um, safe employment, and also for entrepreneurs. Okay, the system is, is quite different depending on the activity you are planning to do in Spain. Uh, also, of course, there is a work and residency permit as a consequence of a labor employment. The uh, company has, a Spanish company has, has contracted you and you, you plan to come and, and live here. Uh, in this specific field, maybe you have heard about uh, high qualified employees which the country is, is trying to attract. And in fact, there are many in Barcelona due to our technical city. And we are happy to receive all of you if, you're, if you have the intention to work here on one of these fields. And also it could be interesting for you that, uh, to know that there is an, an investor's visa when you invest uh, in buying a property or invest in uh, having some funds in a deposit in a bank or in buying a company in a Spain. Okay, so it's, it's a general idea of the several and different uh, visa and uh, work and residency permits that uh, you can apply for when you plan to come to live to Barcelona. Yeah, Taisa? Okay, yes, yes. Um, I have some good news for you. Um, and I'm explaining why we don't have a PowerPoint. First, because you're not going to read it anyway, uh, but the true reason for that, why you don't need to take notes, is here in the chat. Um, Barcelona Activa has got a, a website where everything that we are telling now, plus more information that, that you will find useful, uh, is in a, in a form of wizard so that you can more or less click your way through to your personal situation and you will have find a list of the list of the formalities um so so that's that's there so don't don't uh, don't worry it's all written it's all there and then uh, we, we'll we'll go through the this um this uh, verbal presentation and then you can go and read it uh read it um uh, later on um there was a couple of questions here. If, if is the near still valid if you leave Spain during some years and recently came back? As Lula said, the near number itself is valid. It starts with uh, X or Y, and that number will never expire. It will be yours for the rest of your life. However, the if 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 you um, are British or coming from outside of the European Union, or even if you are European. Um, what you do with that near may expire. So the near is there always, but the residency permit based on that near or the residency registration based on that near uh, may expire 
or can be renewed. But that's the that's the great difference. So, uh, not sure what you what you refer to with the near. Um, uh, it is the the. Um, there, were, there is a lot of uh, there are lots of questions about the near appointment. Um, uh, the COVID situation is doing many things for for our international clientele and the international people living in in Barcelona. First of all, as I already mentioned, the public administration is digitalizing in the speed of light. Uh, and there are every day more services that can be done online, but then there are some services that, like, like the near number, the public administration needs to identify you in person once. So they have to see once your face and then everything else can be taken from there. And since, since there is currently no other form of identifying you and seeing your face as going there or meeting somebody, the digital technologies are not there yet. Uh, so that you could identify yourselves digitally. The only way is to go there. And COVID obviously makes it practically impossible, or, or since we have to social distancing and there can be only so many workers at the office. That's the, that's the, the reason why currently uh, there is a lot of, there's more demand than there is need. A good tip, what, what Lourdes was saying, is to try through the consulate, because that's depending on the consulate and of those countries in those consulates that are open. Uh, that's where, where we recommend our clients to, to at least ask because it, may be, it might be easier. There are uh, more consulates than, than police officer. Uh, um, okay, there are the other questions. You, maybe you, you can let us respond to all the questions regarding the digital certificates when we get to that point. Yes. Yes, exactly. There are several of them just don't mm, if they okay, yes, buried in the yeah. In no, the, there are several the questions um, sorry, related to the address or to the need to change the, the near the near information. It's not related to the near. Near is, a, is 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 just a code as a number. When you apply for the first time, of course, you maybe gave uh, some initial information you had, but you don't have to um, update the information related to the near. Okay, one different thing is the ones, the ones where I was going to speak now, which is the empadronamiento. Okay, the empadronamiento, because it has some relation with the questions about address and the need to change the address or not. Okay, uh, what is empadronamiento? It's a bit difficult word to pronounce. Okay, it's a registration at a town hall. Uh, at a town uh, hall, sorry, uh, it is mandatory. It's the first thing you, you need to know that if you are resident in Spain, it is mandatory according to the Spanish law to be uh, registered in a domicile in Spain. Okay. Um, the law obliges to register at a domicile where you are living and you should update the registration once you change your domicile. So the questions about the obligation of uh, modifying or updating the address of the near, it's not with the near, but it's with the town hall you, where you are living. This is what you have to change when you move from a city to another place or even inside the same city for a, from an apartment to a new apartment. Okay. You have to know that the town hall has the right to unsubscribe the register from time to time. Uh, why, when do they do that? Is when they have suspicion that uh, you are no longer living at this apartment. Sometimes it happens when they receive um, the petition of another people or another family to register at the same apart apartment you were before registered. So they assume you are no longer living there. This is what it's important that when you change from a domicile, you go to the town hall of the same city, if it's the same city or, or, or the different city and you notified to the new town hall where you are living that this is, this is your new domicile okay you don't have to go to the previous uh, town hall but to the new one okay there is there is an internal system that uh, between the, the different uh, cities they communicate this these new uh, registrations. In Barcelona uh, there are different ways to register at, at, at the domicile uh, it's basically online by phone or personally. Uh, online is that uh, you need to, to go into the website of the, of the town hall, you need to fill in a form, and then the town hall will send you by post to the domicile the documents they need uh, you to fill in with a list of documents you need to attach and to 
sent back to the town hall uh, for the registration. With the phone, it's, it's quite similar. Uh, you give your information, then they, they send you the, uh, by post the, the documents and you send them back again. Personally, it's obviously going to one of the offices of the town hall in the, in the district you're living and bringing the information with you. When I'm referring to information, I'm basically speaking about your passport, the near number, we know now what's the near number, uh, and um, some documents that give validity of the, or well, let me explain another way. Do you have to justify uh, which is the reason why you are living in this apartment, which are basically two reasons. One, one is because you bought, uh, you bought it, it's, your, you, it's yours, you are the owner of the apartment where you're living now, or um, because you have rented an apartment, then you have to bring the, the rental contract, for example, or the title deed of the purchase of the rental contract. But you have to justify the reason why you are living in this apartment, okay? So that is the basic information about registration at a town hall. Okay, let's move to a very different subject for a, for a while um, to keep you all awake because one hour listening about these uh, formalities. Um, I'm really grateful that you're still there. There are lots <laughs> of questions coming. So, so that's, a, that's, that's wonderful. About uh, transport. So now we are here and we need to get to this offices or did the police station one way or the other. Um, I don't know if you knew, I didn't know before I, I, I looked, it, looked it up, but there are over 1,000 buses in Barcelona, 10,000 taxis, uh, 7,000 public uh, bicycles of those bicycles, the red things that you can see uh, going around and 187 metro stations. So, so we are basically very good, very well covered by the public transportation. But for those who still want to bring a car or still need a car, maybe they they live outside of the city or, or just uh, just 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 want to have one. Um, you can buy one, or you can uh, you can maybe some of you uh, want to bring your your beloved car from where you are moving to Spain to, to drive your, your car. Um, tourists cannot buy cars in Spain and they cannot register cars that they bring from abroad. So only if you become resident in Spain or if you have the NIA number, the resident NIA number and the empadronamiento, so there's another need for uh, why we need it. Um, only then can you have a car registered in your name. Buying is very easy uh, formality wise, uh, specifically if you buy it from a, from, a, from a car dealer, since it's the car dealer company who does it all for you and they just give you the, the, the documentation when it's ready. But if you want to bring along the car from, from, from your country of origin, then, then you do need to uh, get involved with the with the administration, and this is a very good exercise for those who are interested because you can meet many at the same in the same process. So there are many different steps and many different authorities you can you you can become familiar with. Um, customs, obviously not if you come from the European Union, uh, but from from January first next year and and for all all non-European countries. You have to pass through customs, um, and and depending on why you bring it and when you bring it, you may have to pay um, uh, customs duties or not. So this is a very important point. If you have in mind bringing a car to Spain, uh, take care. I'm not. I'm not sure. Are you seeing me or are you seeing Lourdes? I'm seeing you, Rachel. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. Yes, I'm seeing your beautiful face there. Yeah. <laughs> My whole screen. Okay, just checking. Yeah. Um, okay, so if you um, the first stop is if uh, the first stop is the customs, but then for everybody apart from the customs, the process is the same. Uh, first, you need to pass by the tax authorities. If you bring your own car that you have had at least for six months, uh, and you become resident in Spain. Um, you may get exempted from the registration tax, but beware 
the the time limit when you can uh, can register your car after you become resident it's very strict. So if you leave your car for two years, you become resident here and then bring it. Um, uh, you will have to pay the registration tax and if you come from abroad uh, from outside of the European Union also the customs duty so there's a timing issue here just remember if you bring a car uh, do it right away or or it will it will cost you some some extra and um, after the tax payment or the exemption uh, certificate from the tax authorities uh, you will meet another tax authority, which is the municipal one that is responsible in Barcelona, that is Barcelona Municipal Tax Authority, who is responsible for the road taxes. You will have to pay it first and then, um, then every year uh, from then on. The, the new and the less uh, uh, CO2 emissions, the cheaper it is. Uh, but if you have an old, old Rolls Royce, uh, an expensive car with lots of CEO. It will uh, you will you will note it <coughs> when you get the when you get the tax uh, tax bill. Um, all right. So then, European Union has got rules of how the cars or what kind of specifications the vehicles registered in Spain need to have. And when I started my career like 15 years ago, I did lots of car registration. So, so I'm, this is a sensitive issue for me, but I, I, I personally was taking these cars uh, to, the, to the specific uh, importation um, ITV, the, the, the technical inspections. And we had to change the color of the um, blinks. We had to do, uh, different or the maybe the shades on the windows were not uh, proved. So there are these, these in interesting little things. Um, but basically European cars and new cars, there's no, 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 no problem. Um, my, my British friend even registered their car where the wheel is on the, on the other side. It's, it's, it's not a problem. You can get it done. And then the final stop is the Jefatura de Tráfico and the traffic authority um, traffic authority that actually registers then that's the final point where where the car is registered for you and and, and you get it uh, done and then you go on by the plate so long story short uh, if you bring a car remember to do it quick okay before i go to the next uh, uh, information about um, um, single parent families or large families I was just wanted to answer some of the questions I'm seeing on the chat. Uh, many of them are referring again to the registration at the town hall, the empadronamiento, and the question about uh, if you are not married but you live with your partner, if you are able to register yourself. The, quest the answer is yes. Okay. You will need uh, basically an authorization of the person who has the title, the rental contract, or uh, of the property, or who is the owner of the property. And it's easier if you go together to the town hall and register yourself together. Okay. I was saying at the very beginning of the registration that it is compulsory, but it's not a something on, something that it's only advisable because it's compulsory. With, but at the same time, because um, you will probably need to justify that you are registered at the property for many many things, like when renewing your your residency permits, just as as a justification that you have been living in Spain, when you want to apply for the social security card, as, as we are going to explain, when you want to register your kids at the school and for voting, okay? Uh, that's also important for you to know that you are allowed to, to, to vote at least the European citizens and some specific countries which, were, which have a double treaty with the, with, the, with the country that you are able to vote in the municipality elections and also for the European parliament. Okay. So I'm um, now giving a bit explanation or, or a short explanation about uh, what is this single parent family title or the large family title. Uh, the single parent family title confers you various benefits and or tax advantages and bonuses. Um, and it's, it's, it's given to when a single parent family, sorry, a single parent family is understood to be 
a family made up of one or more children under the age of 21 or 26 if they are still uh, dependent uh, on a single person. If you are in this situation, you can apply for this title. It, it's given by, by the uh, Catalan government, by the Generalitat de Catalonia. And it's basically useful for the, what I was mentioned. It gives you some benefits, some subsidies, uh, some uh, school registration processes, discounts, discounts on nursery schools also, university bonus, reduces price on admission uh, for theaters and museums, some cultural issues here, benefits on hostels of the national network, and discount on public transport first. So it, it, it's, it's very interesting if you didn't know, uh, and if you are in this situation to apply for this title because you can benefit from, from many, many things. Large family title is the opposite. We were mentioning that uh, the one was for the single parent families, and this is for, for the families who have three or more children. Okay, you, you need to know that the average of um, children per women in Catalonia is 1.3. So this large family title is, is, is not something that many, many families in Catalonia have, but uh, if it's your case, uh, you, we recommend you to apply for it because it's, it's free and you can benefit again uh, of uh, many things. For the large families, uh, the benefits are very quite, or quite similar to the single parent families, but there are other additional benefits because uh, for the single parent family, the benefits are basically related to the this um, to what the Catalan government has competence on, but the large uh, large family title is for the whole country. Okay, so you have more even more benefits that for the single. Uh, which other fam uh, which other benefits are different to the single family? Is like, for example, you have some reductions when traveling uh, by air into the same country, which could be interesting. Some bonus of the social security contributions uh, when you are contracting someone for, for uh, taking care of the family. Uh, economic benefits for, for multiple births or adoptions in case you want to expand, sorry, expand your family. And reduction on vehicle registrations for large families. Okay, that also I think it's it's very interesting for you to know. And again, it's it's free. It's just to you have to go to the administration, fill in the form, give them the information, uh, and that's that's enough. And you could benefit of many many things. Okay, now so next next step, Raisa, about um, security. I've been reading the questions in the okay. meanwhile, so so. Regarding the British citizen, um, Sophie, um, the, uh, the appointment system for the Brits is different uh, than for the rest of the, and the, for the rest of the nationalities due to the urgency of the matter, because it has to be, there are certain things that you have to do before the end of the year, or if not, you become automatically as any non-European and you will have to start again or from zero, the, the work and residency permit application. So uh, at least uh, still last week, um, the, it was easier to get, a lot easier to get the appointment for the British. So that shouldn't be, that shouldn't be a problem. It works quite well. Um, now regarding, well, what happens if, uh, I'm changing the subject now. So what happens if you get to an accident with your newly registered car? or you become ill, or you need some support uh, from, the, from the medical system or the social security system in Spain. How do you get in? What do you have to do? And how does it all work? Um, currently, it has been on and off, but currently there is no universal coverage for everybody, for all the, all the, all the people in, in Spain in general. So the, the the two ways to get into the public system is basically um, either uh, getting a job because then you are automatically your your employer the company that you work for is obliged to do all these formalities for you so you will get the social security number and then um, then uh, you'll get the card from your local uh, cup they are called caps um, 
the, the first attention, the primary attention uh, healthcare systems. Spanish healthcare system in general has got a, quite a good reputation. So if you are, um, if you can have the, 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 the card um, for you because you are working um, or, and, and for your young family um, due to that, it's, it's worth, worth, worth using it. You can also have it if, if you are, uh, if you're self-employed, so if you are registered uh, as the so-called autonomo, the self-employed, um, working for yourself and invoicing your clients. Um, and then what you have to do, there are two formalities. First, you have to register at the tax authority as a taxpayer. And second, at the, at the social security office uh, to start paying for the, for the, for the social security. For those who do not, uh, who are not covered, um, the good news in comparison with many, many other countries is that if you need a private health insurance, um, it's fairly cheap and also the coverage is up good. Uh, as an example of a family of, I'm not telling who it is, but as an example of family of three, uh, 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 me, my husband, and our six-year-old kid, uh, we get the full coverage of, of for approximately 3,000, 3,500, 4,000 euros per year. So that would be the first, the, the worst case scenario. Um, is there anything else, Lourdes, you would like to say about the social security? They, they, they are asking if you could repeat about European health uh, care card. Someone missed the information. Jason? Yes, yes, okay. um, absolutely. I, I don't see the, the question now, but absolutely, if you have the European Health Insurance card, um, you, you, that, would, that would give you the, the, the coverage here. There are some um, uh, countries with uh, which Spain has got special treaties regarding the social security system. And there are lots and lots of exp ex, um, uh, lots and lots of um, exceptions to the rules. So, so if you have, if you are in a in a situation of um, of sent worker, or if you just come here for a short period of time, or or if you have a, a special situation in any any in any way then uh, you can you can contact directly the the <coughs> I'm sorry the Spanish social security um, offices that they they work they they provide good service it's a good yeah. yes there are some other questions about coverage okay related to the to the social uh, security system uh, someone was mentioning that his his or her parent was inerte it, it's it's a bit complicated in the sense that uh, you need um, even that even though the social security coverage is very general and universal as it is as it is known as in spain there is a minimum time you you have had to to be registered at the social security sometimes to, to access to the full coverage. Maybe this is the situation, okay, for that specific question. Okay, so I'm going to the next uh, information, which is about digital certificates, because some of the questions you, you've been doing in the chat can be solved uh, with the digital certificate. As, as Raisa was mentioning in the very beginning, we hope that in 15 years, uh, many of the things, or most of the things we are trying to do to deal with administration will be handled through the digital certificate. A digital certificate is, is a digital document that allows identifying people on the internet system, okay? It contains our identification data, and that data are authenticated sorry, by an official body. And uh, it allows also an electronic signature of documents, okay? Which is what is what is this for? What is it used for? It started mainly with the tax for the tax authorities. They, they were the ones initially asking uh, specifically for the companies. It is now compulsory for the companies and for the autonomous to have a digital certificate to deal with the tax authorities to fill in your tax duties um, periodically. 
So it was the, the main ones promoting the, the obtention or the application of a digital certificate, but there are many uh, administrations, not only the, the central one, but also the Catalan government and even at the town hall, the city hall of Barcelona and many other cities where it is very really useful to have a digital certificate. What for? For example, uh, as I was mentioning before, presentation and settlement of taxes, which is this <coughs> one. Okay. Sometimes you can present uh, appeals and claims with a digital certificate on the system of the specific administration. You can consult this the registration at the muni at municipal register. So all the questions about empadronamiento, you cannot do it now with the certificate, the digital certificate, but once you are registered, you can, uh, for example, obtain certificates of residency or of co-living with your family. Once you do, you need to bring this document for registering you at the social security or at the school or at any other places. You can, you don't have to go personally to the town hall, but as you are already registered, you can apply for, for a, a certificate. You can uh, also do consultation on traffic fines and even pay for them if it's needed. And sometimes sub subsidies also are, are built through the, through the system electronically. Okay. And also electronic signature of many, many documents and official forms. So uh, probably due to the uh, current situation of COVID, uh, administrations are um, tending to promoting more um, services through online, which is very good to, for all of us and make things very easy. So the only thing you have to do is to apply for the digital certificate and how to obtain that. Uh, you, you, you can find as, as is this very specific uh, steps we have to, to follow. You have uh, very good information on the website of the Barcelona International Welcome uh, from Barcelona. Uh, but uh, you have to know that you first have to apply for uh, like a code through the Spanish National Mint website, which is available in English. Okay. So you first apply for a code, and then with this code, you go to the tax uh, authorities office near, near, near you. There are also many other offices where you can go with this code. They just valid and this code identifying you. So saying that you are the same person that you, you said you are. And then you go back home uh, and you can discharge the certificate. You can store that in your computer. Uh, you can uh, send this certificate by email to yourself to, for another computer, and then it has to be renewed between two and four years, depending on the on the situation. Okay, but it, it, once you have it, uh, it will help you a lot with this administration steps. Okay, so that's the basic information about digital certificate. All right, I see that we have eleven minutes left. Um, Maybe just a, a few quick mention of the remaining issues. We have been answering the questions at the same time. So, so um, I don't think we need to leave many minutes for that at the end. Um, now we have gone through the obligatory and necessary services. And then there are some that are just good to have or nice to have. One is the, for example, the the library card. There are 40, 40 different libraries in Barcelona. So lots and lots of useful material and information um, uh, happenings, um, uh, cultural events. And 30%, according to the statistics, 30% um, uh, of the users are foreigners. So congratulations, we are doing a good job using the, this, this resource that Barcelona is offering offering for us. Um, it's very easy to get the, the card. It's free of charge. So basically you can apply for it online. Um, just there is a website where you can, if you, if you look, uh, look up um, Biblioteca Barcelona, it's easy to find the form that you need to fill in and then you can pick up your card from the, from the library. Um, or it, is, it, can, it can be sent to you. And it works for all the libraries in Catalonia. So that's also good to know. Um, it's not only for the library that, you, that, you, that is closest to you, but the whole, the, all the libraries in Catalonia. Okay. So now it's time to talk about pets, 
<laughs> okay. Uh, it's just the general and basic information about uh, your obligations if you have a pet uh, or you bring your pet to the to the city of Barcelona. Uh, people who own dogs, cats, ferrets, and wild other wild animals in captivity, they are required to register the the pets at the town hall. There is a census register for pets. Uh, and there is a time to, for doing that. You, they, have been, they have to be registered three months of, after the birth or uh, 30 days after the acquisition of the animal. Okay. There are lots of animals in, in Catalonia. It's, vets talk about 1,000, uh, 150,000, sorry, vets in Catalonia. And it said that uh, each or one of each 10 inhabitants in Barcelona have a dog. So there are many people who have to know that they need to register and it's mandatory to register these animals in the in the city hall. It's basically to in case they, they are they are lost. So just to find the, the owners. OK, or see if something happens to the to the animals, because uh, they have to insert a chip in, in the animals. And this is the chip has a goat and this is registered at the town hall. OK. So that's very basic information, but it's good to know that you have this obligation. Uh, what about the pets arriving from abroad? Um, they, they need the, the passport or the certificate from the vet, right? Um, yes, right. Yes. So that they can they can come here. Exactly. All right, then, then the final point on my list are the buy sinks that you can see everywhere because there are 6,000 of them um, without electricity and today also 1,000 electrical bikes. So that's a great way to move around between the 400 different stations uh, among the city. So there's basically one in each corner. Um, this is a service that is quite fully digitalized. So how to get the bison card is to, to, what you have to do is to, you have to download the application that's called SMO. If you look for a SMO uh, application, then for those who SMO, easy to write, so I put it there. Um, and then um, you have to create a user and the card is sent to your home address. Um, so, so that's, that's easy. This is how you can write one of those wonderful red, red, uh, red, uh, red bikes. Now we are running out of time. There are lots of interesting questions. Uh, we will repeat this session in some form, someday, somehow, um, to answer answer all these interesting questions. I'm sorry that we don't have time to go into detail into all of them. As a final, um, as a final tip. Or, or where, where to find more information? I already posted the in the chat. I'll put it again if in case there are some someone who who didn't take note of the Barcelona um, uh, Barcelona Activa website. That all these formalities and many others are explained. You can either check them uh, looking for a certain topic, or you can use the the wizard. Um, to sort out your situation and the and the system will will give you general indications of of what you should do. Also very useful two telephone numbers. Zero deu, zero docha. These are services. The first one is from the town hall of Barcelona and the second one is from from the from Catalonia and they provide services in English and they 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 have heard, heard all the questions that you 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 possibly may have, and uh, and and know the answers to many of them, and they can redirect you to the right uh, right source. Also, the town hall of Barcelona has got uh, of offices of um, of uh, public or, or atención pública to, to attend uh, the public. And if you if you if you go to the right wrong place, they pro they most certainly won't or know how, where, where you should be going. Um, uh, with this, uh, unless you Lourdes want to say something else. Um, no, I was also reading all the messages because there are lots of, I would like to answer to all of them, but it's a bit difficult. 
but no, it's it's. I understand that that each of the steps or the or the um, formalities we've been speaking about are have several options, multiple situations, many 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 questions. Each people, each person has his own uh, situation. So uh, I'll, I'll recommend, as I, as you were saying, first of all to to have a look at the website of Barcelona, which is very useful. And very detailed uh, about the steps, and uh, if they have questions, also the telephone number. So it's so nothing else to to, to say. I, I'm sorry I, we haven't been able to to speak up about everything, everything with Vito, uh, but we had just to give a general information about um, useful uh, formalities. We think that uh, foreigners need to know when they arrive to Barcelona or they plan to come to the city. So they are very welcome to. Yes. And remember, you are not alone. We are 300,000 foreigners living in Barcelona and, uh, and, and for a very good reason, because this is a, this is a wonderful city, yeah. wonderful people, wonderful services, and, and we'll get the formalities is the, is the minor thing. Uh, let's keep on enjoying, no matter uh, how the external conditions are and not making the life easy. But we are here and the life continues. Yeah, exactly. Thank yeah. you. Thank you very much to all of you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye bye.